Like, I am very much brought him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I'm all nervous because it's my turn. Okay. Why? Okay. Okay. Get it together. Pretend it's my turn. But okay. you're doing the intro. Okay. Hi, fashionistas. I'm Chi Chi. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. If you love fashion, beauty, and lifestyle content, then sis, you found your tribe. So Period. Stay a while. So today I have with me some fashionable, okay, <laughs> fabulous. I have Nita here. Hey. Hey, girl. Nita, hey. Danielle. Yeah. And, and then I have Ashley here. And from head to curve. Yes. And in today's video, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about career, life change, and all that good stuff. P.S. This is part three of a three-part series. So when you are done, make sure you check the description box down below and check out Ashley's video where we talk all about finances and leveling up, okay? Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Getting to the money. Yep, 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 yep. And then check out Nita's where we talk about confidence and dating yes. and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how we made the pivot, how mm -hmm. we decided to pivot later in life. We're not that old, okay, later in life. How we decided to pivot into this new career, um, and it's a relatively new industry. All three of us are all content creators, but all of us have different backgrounds. My background is in education. Nita's is in... Hair cosmetology. Hair okay, yeah. I was my house trying to think of it. Yeah, yes. cosmetology. And Ash's uh, background is in accounting. And we all three create content. So the, the purpose of the segment is just kind of to share how we decided to make the pivot into this new career and how it's been for us. It was really important for me for us to talk about this because making a shift later in life can sometimes seem really scary and honestly it can seem like you need you know it does take some level of faith because there is a chance that you know you may fail um and i think that was the one thing that i had to become okay with before i made the pivot was being okay with the fact that i may fail and being that this is a public ish kind of career and it 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 it, it, it would be public but i think there's also an imp there's also so much to learn when you choose to make changes public. I know for me, I was very much inspired by women who looked like me, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, seeing them publicly pivot their careers and be successful mm -hmm. at it. So again, a little background, and I've talked a little bit about this, but I used to be a, um, a high school science teacher. I have like eight plus years in science education. That was not my original career choice, but I graduated right after the 2008, you know, financial crisis and child, you could find a job nowhere. So after looking for a job and especially, and I decided to pick an undergraduate major, I don't know whether I, what I was smoking, my undergraduate major <laughs> was in biology. To me, that's like getting a degree in like art. No offense if you have an art degree. <laughs> No offense if you have an art degree, but like all the jobs in biology literally require you to have a master's degree. So it's like one of those degrees that you are getting to get another degree. And originally that degree was to do something in the medical field. If you don't know, my name is Chi Chi. I am Nigerian. So coming from an immigrant household, there's only a handful of careers that you can have. And that involves being a doctor, an engineer, or a lawyer. One of them traditional mm -hmm. careers. They don't want nothing else. And so the point was I was going to get this biology degree and either go to pharmacy school or go to medical school. And then your girl decided to, you know, have a baby my junior year of college. And you know what? I was like, well, you know what? I have disappointed everybody anyway. So I am going to do what I want. I did go ahead and finish off my biology degree because I was not about to start all over. It. And so after looking for work, couldn't find work. One of my friends just like was like, hey, you know what? Maybe um, try education. We're looking for science teachers really badly. And so I pivoted into education and I had to go get another whole degree to keep my job because I didn't have, yes, I had to go get a master's degree while teaching. And when I tell you that there is no amount of schooling that will ever prepare you to be a teacher, I mean, it's good to go to school, but you learn your job in the trenches, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that. I had a kid, you know, a toddler, and I was also going to school as well. 
And then while I was looking for work I'm during the like right after I had graduated, I came to an epiphany that I really did not the path I was on, I didn't like it. I didn't want to be a pharmacist or a doctor and all of that. And so I started trying to find community around my interests, which was fashion. And that is how I found the fashion community online. And fast forward, I learned that people can make money off of stuff. Because again, I was a parent taking care of a child and teachers don't make enough money. I was like, I don't want to get another second or third job. Like I don't want to ever not see my child. And so that's kind of like how I got into education. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pivoting process, but I thought I'd give the other ladies the floor to kind of talk about, and I feel like you guys have mentioned it a little bit, but like, how did you decide to make the career change? What was your catalyst? What was your background? When did you realize that you, you know, you're, you, you're, you are you you like a job? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you okay. decided to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Well, so I went to school for accounting actually. What? Um, when I so growing up, my mom, like I said, we didn't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. but my mom did everything that she could to expose us, you know, bigger and better person. Mm -hmm. So like she couldn't afford private education, but we always went to what were considered magnet schools at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Like she would get up and drive us. 30, 45 minutes across mm -hmm. town to a better school. Mm -hmm. um, and so growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer. And I always said I had, I would have two jobs. I had one that would make me money, which was to be a lawyer. And the other that would be my passion, which would be to help young women with self-esteem. I wanted to have a nonprofit organization. Now, this is since I was literally in elementary school, mm -hmm. which is interesting that I now have this job. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, so that, those were like my money making and then my passion. Um, but once I went to high school, I went to Townview Law Magnet, if you're in Dallas, if you've ever heard of that, I had an internship at a uh, law firm. Mm -hmm. Well, the first intern was actually at Frank Crowley Courthouse, and y'all would never forget, I had an encounter with this lady who was, you know, uh, not all the way there, mm -hmm. and like, she like, usually when they met with people, they would meet with them in like a holdover, but she was in a special room with like guards, and I was mm -hmm. like, but I'm not thinking anything of it, y'all, we went in there, that lady like hopped on the table and started meowing like a cat, and she laid down like a big, like she was trying to plead insanity, and baby, she pleaded her case. Mm -hmm. But anyway, after I like did that internship, I was like, these people are crazy, <laughs> I don't wanna work in law, like this is too much for me. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> and mind you, I know that there are different types of law, but I realized that, the you know, space. perception that mm -hmm. I had that all these lawyers are making all of this money, it was like, actually, no, most no. of them don't, and they end up, you know, doing X, Y, and Z type of work. But I also mm -hmm. just realized I didn't like law like that. There was a lot of reading about legal stuff. Mm -hmm. And again, I was looking for it. I just wanted to, like, wear a power suit with a briefcase. Yep, and, like, yep, to me, it was, like, status. The and my yeah. godparents, uh, my goddad was an attorney, and mm -hmm. he had his own law firm. So that was my picture of success. Mm -hmm. And I was going to make this money and save my family. Family, and that was where I thought I should do to make money because that's mm -hmm. who I saw making money my, my godfather mm -hmm. and he was a lawyer so I was like I don't like the law and I was like I do love numbers I've always liked numbers because numbers are very finite mm -hmm. one plus one will always equal two mm -hmm. and so I was like I'm gonna go to school for accounting so I went to college I went for accounting and I realized so I went to college I went to UTA and I went um they had this program where it was like you could do get your master's and your bachelor's kind of in like a five-year program mm -hmm. so I was in like this accelerated program so I took accounting classes starting out my freshman year mm -hmm. and so um I had to like take these extra classes to get some certifications I guess to say that I could do it whatever case may be I'm doing this mm -hmm. so the um the uh, accountant that taught this particular class worked with nonprofits, which mm -hmm. is what I thought I wanted to do right mm -hmm. And so when he started talking about his day to day, I was like, that's boring. I don't want to do that. Like, I don't, you know what? I actually don't want to crunch numbers all day. Mm -hmm. So now it's like the two dreams that I just knew they were both crushed. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was working for Aetna, I was a claim. I've had a, I was working for is. Aetna as a claims, <laughs> like a medical claims. Mm -hmm. And so I worked around a lot of people that were, that were older, mm -hmm. had children a little bit more settled. Mm -hmm. And I just was around a lot of people that didn't like their job. And at mm -hmm. this time I'm like 19, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, I want to like my job, but I don't want to do this. But what do mm -hmm. I want to do? So mm -hmm. long story short, I'd always done hair, mm -hmm. but I didn't look at being a hairstylist as successful. Yes. And I really mm -hmm. wanted to make my mom proud. I really mm -hmm. wanted to make my family proud because I saw all of the sacrifices that they made to try to get us the best that they could with what they had. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I actually think I like people. I think I'm going to go do hair. And so mm -hmm. it was the scariest conversation I ever had with my mom to mm -hmm. be like, hey, ma, I actually think I'm going to drop out of school and go get my cosmetology license. Mm -hmm. She was like, you know, she thought I I thought she was gonna choke me. <laughs> I was like, 
She finna hit me up. Mm-hmm. And she was like, mm-hmm. and she said, you know what? She said, that's what you think you want to do? I was like, yeah, I actually, that was the first fast I've ever done in my life. Mm-hmm. And I was like, my fast that I prayed about, I think this is something I want to do. And she mm-hmm. said, okay. And she said, well, are you going to go back and finish your degree? And I said, well, I said, give me a year. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll go finish it. Mm-hmm. And here we are. I didn't go finish it. <laughs> I didn't go finish it. I did hair full time for 10 years before I made the transition to do this. So I've been an entrepreneur for 12 years total. I did hair for 10 and I've been doing this for two. So that's my story about the transition. And I transitioned to this, talk, talking about later in life. Mm-hmm. I was 30. One. Mm-hmm. So when I got pregnant with my daughter, I knew that I didn't want to do hair anymore just mm-hmm. because of the type of hustle that that is. Mm-hmm. I knew that it would be very hard for me to be the type of involved mom that I wanted to be mm-hmm. in just the culture of how hair works. I'm not saying that it's impossible. Just from what I had seen, mm-hmm. um, I was like, I don't think this is something I want to do. In addition to the fact I started having issues with my hands and stuff like that. So that's what kind of got me to looking at other things. Mm-hmm. And this just kind of honestly fell in my lap during the pandemic when the shop was closed. So mm-hmm. um, it was very scary to transition later in life. It mm-hmm. was a little bit easier because I transitioned before. before yeah. But it mm-hmm. was yeah. different because I'm a real grown woman with real grown bills and, and I have a child. Mm-hmm. So before, mm-hmm. when I transitioned, I was like, what 22 maybe mm-hmm. you know it was just me so i knew i could fend for myself mm-hmm. but now like i said i'm a real grown woman mm-hmm. with real grown bills and a child depending on me so uh very scary but mm-hmm. we got it done and here we are mm-hmm. <laughs> mine is i don't want to say the end in mind but i've always started with where i want to go in mm-hmm. mine um mm-hmm. and she's exposed she exposed me to different neighborhoods and different things like i really love real estate Mm -hmm. and also numbers amen Mm -hmm. so she exposed me to different um neighborhoods and homes and things that already piqued my interest Mm -hmm. that that exposed me to a different lifestyle than what Mm -hmm. we were living at the time Mm -hmm. so i remember having a conversation in the car with her and my older cousin i was like oh my god mama i really love these houses what do i have to do Mm -hmm. to get here Mm -hmm. and she was like were you already good at math do accounting because that will get you here i would say i said bet Cool. That's all I need to know. Mm-hmm. So I, <laughs> and I was already good at math. Honestly, mm-hmm. I was a straight A student with math. Mm-hmm. I was an A and B student already, but math was the only thing, honestly, that kept me awake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything else put me to sleep. Mm-hmm. And by the grace of God, I still passed those classes. Mm-hmm. But all the other stuff, math is what is. I, that's how I eventually knew later on in life. I'm an analytical person that I I need to know the process and all of that stuff. It really just interests me, and it mm-hmm. just keeps me in tune with whatever the situation is mm-hmm. um so she was like being an accountant i was like okay cool bet i'm already good at numbers accounting is numbers but it's mm-hmm. so much more other things mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so i went into uh i went to get my bachelor's degree in accounting mm-hmm. i also am a person whose plans have plans have plans b's mm-hmm. so when i was in high school i made sure to get my cosmetology license just in case life didn't work out the way i thought mm-hmm. so i still have my license i just mm-hmm. don't use it <laughs> but mm-hmm. i still have it i use it in college just to get a little extra money on the side you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but I actually made sure to work toward being in accounting. That was the goal. Mm-hmm. Got my bachelor's degree, got my accounting job six months after I graduated. Second day of accounting, I was like, Jesus, mm-hmm. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I don't like it here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? I was literally looking up at the fluorescent lights like, girl, what did you do? Mm-hmm. The fluorescent. What did you do? <laughs> I never thought that when I got to the goal, I wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah. And yeah. you get, you have all of these goals in mind and yeah. you like mm-hmm. strive to get there and then you get there and you're like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, this ain't what I thought, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually I didn't know a lot about myself, and th- mm-hmm. that's gonna happen. You don't know a lot about yourself when you create these career goals early yeah. in life. Yeah. So it's hard to know what you're gonna be doing for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. So mm-hmm. you're going to make changes, mm-hmm. um, depending. Regardless, even now we've made changes. We may make changes later exactly. because we'll have different priorities later on. So right. when I sat in that corporate job and I was like, my lord, today I don't like this. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm also not. When it comes to money, mm-hmm. I like stability mm-hmm. more than I like erratically making changes just to make myself happy. Mm-hmm. So I sat there unhappy for a while mm-hmm. because my bills need to be paid. Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure that I am stable because of the background that I've seen with my mom and my mm-hmm. sister really struggle as single parents 
trying to make ends meet and work. I knew I didn't want that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to drive through this discomfort however long I need to mm -hmm. until I get to where I'm going to be because I'm not just going to make an erratic decision to leave yeah. just because I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in a safe place because I lived with my mom at the time. I lived mm -hmm. with her for six years after I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. But I also was like money. <laughs> so <laughs> even though I didn't like accounting, I still went and got my master's because I was like money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I yep. want to still mm -hmm. make it as much as I can in mm -hmm. this space until I figure out where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So I was, I, I knew I wasn't happy. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I still went and took a year and a half mm -hmm. to go get a master's degree. And mm -hmm. that allowed me to make more money in accounting while I was still working to figure out what the heck I wanted to do. Eventually, I got exposed <laughs> to this young lady who looks nothing like me mm -hmm. online because I was doing stuff at work that I wasn't supposed to be doing because it wasn't my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was doing some research on blogs and stuff like that and it was a uh, Rachel Parcell. Oh, I know. I, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was her? Pink Peonies was her Pink original. Peonies, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And she, if you see her, she's she's not me. Yeah. Not, she don't look nothing like us. She just mm -hmm. she this big and yeah. she has her life just looks totally different than mine. Yeah. So I was like, I, I did research on her life. Honestly, I kind of like cyber stalked her a little bit. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk to her, but I went and did a deep dive on her life and even what articles said about her mm -hmm. just just to see what her career looked like because mm -hmm. I was intrigued. Mm -hmm. And the exposure, like I said before, exposure helps you know where to go. Yeah. If you don't know, if you don't get exposed to something, you just don't know yeah. what is yeah, possible. What when I found out that what she does is a job, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is nice. Mm -hmm. She don't look like me, mm -hmm. but is there someone else that is, is there something I can build that creates a community mm -hmm. of women like myself mm -hmm. while I still be able to make a little money, but mm -hmm. serve at the same time. Mm -hmm. The whole purpose was I needed, I knew in accounting, Accounting was very bottom line, and I'm not a bottom line person. Mm -hmm. It's very corporate. I'm not a person that it would, would enjoy corporate. Mm -hmm. um, I like analytics, but I'm also creative. So mm -hmm. I needed something that would be able to merge the two and yeah. be able to resolve and solve a problem for yeah. other people and yeah. have connections. Mm -hmm. So that stuff was important to me, and I didn't get that from accounting. Yeah. But I learned that as I grew. So and learned more about myself. So from there, I like did a, a deep dive on her, and then I tried to do a deep dive on the industry of blogging and content creating in general, mm -hmm. and saw that there are different people. Even mm -hmm. at the time, it didn't look like it did today because this was 2016. Yeah. I was 26 when mm -hmm. I actually made the thought to move into content creation. Mm -hmm. I'm 33 today, mm -hmm. but. 26 when I was like, okay, when I got exposed to this and it looked still totally different, but mm -hmm. there were other people that were, you know, bigger mm -hmm. and there was other black women that mm -hmm. I was able to see to give me a little bit more comfort that this is possible. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't see it, I still mm -hmm. should have walked forth in faith and mm -hmm. know that this was possible. I, but I mean myself sometimes need example. Mm -hmm. But I started researching on that. Mm -hmm. I, for a year, I did as much research as possible and then I tried it. No, that was in 2015 when I was exposed. Mm -hmm. 2016 is when I started mm -hmm. trying it um, in March when I started my blog mm -hmm. and I started YouTube, I want to say mm -hmm. a year after that. What let me know that I liked it was mm -hmm. that I kept going. Mm -hmm. I'm real quick to be like, Ooh, uh, I'm bored. Let me move <laughs> on to something different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, um, I, can, <laughs> I can tell if it's so, like pretty quickly, if it's something I ain't going to be too fond of, yeah. just like in accounting took me two days to be like, this ain't for me. Yeah. But that was in the job. Mm -hmm. But once I got to that part, like once I got in the, the part of actually doing the work on a weekly basis, um, in content creation, even though I did not know what I was doing, I thought I knew what I was doing at the time. So I was doing the work that I thought I knew to do for years before I made money and I kept doing it. Mm -hmm. So it was three and a half years before I actually made a substantial dime from mm -hmm. content creation. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this total seven years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it that's how I got exposed to this. Mm -hmm. And after five years of doing content creation, honestly, it took me looking at a, uh, what's that girl's name? Mm -hmm. Somebody did a live and she actually does some coaching for content creators. She's another black influencer mm -hmm. and she does coaching mm -hmm. for and has courses for content creators. But mm -hmm. she also did like a weekly live to have talk about mm -hmm. some of the background things that we can do to get ourselves to make more money. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make a move in a job unless I'm going to be able to support myself. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. why? You know, mm -hmm. that's just that's. I need to be able to support myself and my family and mm -hmm. still be able to have the kind of career that I'm looking for. So mm -hmm. it allows me to serve and support and provide solutions for other women and create a community, but still get paid. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it, she talked about the background of what we could do 
that would actually make us more appeasing to brands. Mm -hmm. And I did that. I watched her live. I did exactly what she said for 30 days. I didn't have to pay for anything, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. So that's just to let you know, you don't always have to pay mm -hmm. something to learn something mm -hmm. in order right. to make more money. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have to pay anything because our lives were free. I did what she did for 30 days. After that, I made my first $21,000 a month. Mm -hmm. I was like, Yes, God. Mm. And that's when I started making consistent money and mm -hmm. content creating. I did that for about a year and a half, getting mm -hmm. myself ready financially. Mm -hmm. And I was able to quit my accounting job because my business was able to bring in a lot more than I was making in accounting. So mm -hmm. that's how we got here. Oh, oh, that's good. That's good. Thank you, guys. Y'all did amazing. That's inspiring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make 21000 <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I was Girl. excited about five hundred. Y'all gonna be five hundred dollars? That was exciting. Girl, you got the questions. Oh, so. well, I, no, 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 but no, this no. Was, no this oh, was okay. Like, so I was like, did uh, I read my question? I thought you read. Anyway, okay, go ahead. so my journey was a little took a little bit longer, right? Because I said for me, when I got into content creator content creation, it was more about finding community. And so when I started like looking at women who love fashion, who are plus size, found this whole community, Gabby Greg, Gabby Fresh, That's and her and all of her people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I dove in head first. And I, I saw how I changed when it came to like confidence and just so many things in my life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this for other people because I love my family and, you know, no shade to them. But I just felt like I was never affirmed as I was. There was always this mm -hmm. higher bar that I was never meeting, especially like physically. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I was always the thickest person in the room. And they're like, no, you got to be petite and slim and small, you know, and all these things. Because that's just like being, you know, being Nigerian. If you're Nigerian, you know this. That's like that is you know, epitome of what a woman should be. Mm -hmm. Teeth, small, mm -hmm. you know, a housewife who cooks. I don't know, this has nothing to do with cooking. But I'm not a cooker, okay? I don't, <laughs> I don't like to cook. Me, look, I'm so proud to say, I can say She's it now. So like, I, I, I don't like to cook. Okay, can I cook? Absolutely, because I was taught how to cook. But that's not my, you know, I don't cook because it's therapeutic. No, I cook because okay. I have to. Somebody got to gotta eat, <laughs> you know? So there are a lot of things about me. And again, I had this, I had always been creative. You know, when I was in high school, I used to get in trouble for sketch. Like, you know, some kids get in trouble for chatting with their friends. No, I used to I sketch. That was how I was able to pay attention to the teacher, right? And I had notebooks and notebooks filled with sketches and things. And I was always told that, oh, that's just a hobby. That's something you do it on the side, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I fell into this world of girls who love fashion, you know, who kept up with the trends and all those things, I was so inspired that, you know what? Let me help other women to like walk into their purpose. Now, I knew that there were some people who were making a living off of it, but this was early days. This is 2012, okay? So, like, I would say from 2012 to 2015, there were, like, maybe a handful of girls that were making that money, but they were, like, in L.A. and New York. That was it, L.A. or New York. So, I knew there were people making money, but and I had... it looked a lot different. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. They, it was very highly gate kept, okay? The only people that I knew that were successful kind of had like an industry insider sort of like route. Somehow they were like in media or management and that's how they became full. And nobody even said the word full time back. To be quite honest, like so many things have changed. Like, oh, I do this full time. There was no such thing. You know, people just had blogs. I thought these girls were all like super rich. Okay, they didn't look like me, most of them. Um, and they were always popping up with Chanel's and the, you know, all these, all these like high end designers. I'm like, how these girls? So I just assumed that they just came from privilege and for money. And that's how they did it. But for me, again, it was all about just building community. So I would say it wasn't until like 2015 that I started creating content, started taking more of my time, you know? And that's when I was like, okay, I need to be more consistent with this if I'm going to be doing this. And then also, um, if I'm going to be doing this, I need to be making like money. Okay. Because for years, I told my, my family, first, I didn't say anything to my family. It was this whole secret. No one in my personal life knew that I had an online presence at all. In, in actually my first channel here on YouTube is deactivated because when I got my job as a teacher, I shut that channel down. And I had worked on that channel for a while. I had like a thousand plus subscribers and I shut it down. I started this channel, biggest mistake I ever made. Cause I thought, oh, I had a thousand up here. I'll have a thousand here. Nah, it took me a minute on the second channel to actually, you know, build up that momentum. And so I changed everything because I didn't want anybody in my per professional, personal life to know that I was doing this thing online. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I won the Real Women Style Awards for Redbook. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year is this? 2016. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so that experience was what really changed the game for me. Like, you know, I had never experienced where, you know, you had a car service, somebody came and they took you to this huge set and they had stylists and makeup artists and I saw all oh, of yeah, like the, to a lot. Yeah, yeah, all of the machinery that actually takes to make a cover sheet, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, this is why, you know, content creators are needed because we condense this all down. Mm -hmm. The budget is way less yeah, with us, you know, so I saw it. But during that experience, I was like, God, let this not be the top. Like, mm -hmm. this, this, this is not be the pinnacle, mm -hmm. right, of all these years of like hard work and building community and all those things, right? And I, honestly, my heart was sick at that point because I had been doing it for quite a bit of time and I had seen other girls kind of like take off and mine hadn't like taken off like the other girls had. That award kind of just let me see that God saw what I was doing. You know, it was like, I see you girl. I know you've been working at this. I got you, okay? And so that's that was my prayer. I remember I was they were taking me back to the airport. I started crying in the car and I was praying. I was like, God, please let's not be the top. Like, they don't let me see this and it's not possible for me, you know? And so it was 2016 that I decided, okay, I have to make a shift in my life. I don't want to be in education any longer. It was a lot of hard work. The pay wasn't good. And I just also didn't want to be one of those teachers. I saw a lot of teachers, like you said, and you said, um, I saw a lot of teachers who did not like their job, mm -hmm. but they were older and they stayed there because they needed a pension. Yeah. You know, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want anybody who teaches my kid to be like this. And so I don't want to be like this either. So I started just peeping and moving and just looking to see what like other people were doing, how they were making money and et cetera, et cetera. Now, if I were to do it all over again, I would have definitely done what Ash did, which was like literally research, find out like what is the strategy behind this? What is the mechanism behind this, right? I think the privilege of starting now is that there's so much more information. Mm -hmm. People have courses, people have, like there's so much mm -hmm. more back stuff that you can look at now to help you kind of figure out what your lane is. Back then there wasn't. So that was what I did from 2016 to about 2018. And then I started praying. I was like, okay, God, I couldn't pull the trigger because I was scared. You know, like a lot of people talking about fear. I was scared of failing. I was scared I didn't want to be homeless, okay? I didn't want to have bad credit. I didn't want any of these things. So I started praying. I was like, God, this is what I want to do. Help me do this. Help me do this. Help me do this. So for me, one of the one of the first things that I did, I know we talked in the other, who's like, I think it was Ashley's live, um, about finance, about like how did you figure out, I, you have to come up with a strategy. If you're making a career change, I think, or you're thinking about making a career change, it does not matter whether you are, going to entrepreneurship, you want to be an influencer, if you want to be a hairstylist, whatever you want to be, it does make a lot of sense to have a strategy. You're not just like, oh my God, this job is annoying me and quit, mm, right? Yeah. No, I would not recommend that. So for me, again, my strategy was paying off debt. And then the next strategy was, I didn't see a way for me to increase my income just because of my son and all the things that were going on in my life. So what I did was actually reduce my expenses. And by doing that, I actually moved in with my mama. I'm not ashamed to say it. Mm, um, my, um yeah so my mom was retiring it all kind of worked out my mom was retiring and she actually lived my mom lives in Africa she grew up she her she was like in the, in the government and she was retiring but she wanted to move to the states because after she retired so I was like okay well you're coming back here so let's just move in with each other and live together right because housing was one of my biggest expenses it was important for me that I lived in a good neighborhood so my son could go to good schools. I couldn't afford private school, but I wanted to live in the best neighborhood that I could. And our neighborhood is like nationally ranked. And so I was like, yeah, oh, let me. Oh, no. You know, that's parent flex. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that up. Yeah, you know, <laughs> nationally ranked. I, well, I was a teacher, so you know I know the behind the scenes of all this stuff. No. Yeah. Um, My neighborhood is so, right? Yeah, so. Um, it was important, but it was a huge sacrifice to live in that neighborhood based on how much money I was making. And so I moved in with my mom and we were basically splitting the rent, right? So I could afford to still live in my neighborhood, still, you know, take care of my responsibilities on my kids, my kid and all that. Let me say kids, kid and all that. And, um, and all of that, right? So that is what I did. And honestly, it did save me because right after I, I made the pivot, the pandemic hit, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be ashamed to say that my mom paid my rent quite a few times because I was like, I didn't have it. For these parents. You know, I, I didn't have it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I definitely feel like it's so important to put yourself in a financial stable position 
even if you're going to make that pivot because then your your money is not on the dollar sign your money is on focusing on growing your business because i feel like some of the choices you make when you're crunched it's not always yeah it's not that desperation is not mm -hmm. only always good for your business mm -hmm. you know in the long term and that's if um, you're going to entrepreneurship because yes. sometimes you can make a jump from mm -hmm. working for someone and mm -hmm. then working for someone again mm -hmm. but it interrupts your pay yes so you still yes. want to make sure that you yes. even not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur right. yes. so we're not going to yeah. assume that but yeah. we're, we're talking about it because mm -hmm. that's what we did yes when you have, when you are not worried about money, you have more options. You can wait for a higher offer, a better position, et cetera, et cetera, you know? So that was like, those were the two things that I did, a little bit of my story. So the question I have for you ladies would be like tips for, and I think we kind of already started talking about this, but tips for making that pivot. What was the number one thing that you did that you think really helped in that transitional period? Or rather, okay, you know what? No, let's not start with that. Let's start with feet. She don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. Oh, uh, yeah. oh. It's coming out of my brain. Okay. Um, what'd you call it? Fear. What was your biggest stumbling block before you decided to make oh, the pivot? Girl. I think that was a, that's a okay. good question to start. Um, mm. And then you can drop some tips. So I'll talk about the pivoting later in life because that's where we are mm -hmm. specifically. So, um, so my pivot was two years ago when I went full time in content creation. I think the biggest fear or mm -hmm. roadblock, mm -hmm. well, my biggest fear was just Fear of the unknown mm -hmm. at a later age and being a mom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, I'd, I'd, I'd pivot, I'd made a pivot before mm -hmm. to, or took the leap of faith. At, mm -hmm. that, at that time, mm -hmm. I didn't save, I didn't, I mean, I, I literally jumped out there on the porch and mm -hmm. thank God for the, the <laughs> salon owner. No, mm -hmm. the salon owner there was a lady I grew up in church with and mm -hmm. she gave me a space and she let me work for free for a while and mm -hmm. then she like eased me into paying full booth rent. And so, mm -hmm. like, she would literally pray with me every day. Like, she was mm -hmm. like, well, how much money do you need to make? Like, she was like, we can do this. It's like, mm -hmm. but you need to be here. Like, if you mm -hmm. need clients, we can get you clients in the door, but you mm -hmm. have to be here. Mm -hmm. You can't be talking about, oh, you come in after you got to work. We mm -hmm. need to be in here. We can put some butts in your chair, mm -hmm. but you got to be here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they were instrumental. But anyway, so as far as the later part in life, again, you know, it's just like fear of the unknown, number one, because this is an unknown new industry for me. Mm -hmm. I'd only been doing it at that time for, I started, again, creating content. And I say that because I didn't, I didn't look at it as creating content. Mm -hmm. I was just having fun in my living room trying on clothes, you know. Mm -hmm. I ain't got nothing else to do to shop clothes. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or I'm like doing my makeup on live because I love makeup. Or mm -hmm. I'm showing people how to do their hair at home because the mm -hmm. shop is closed. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like just doing stuff that I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but I didn't look at it as creating content. So again, when it took off, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. nice. okay, oh, this is nice. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized I could make a little money, I, again, I looked at it initially like, oh, okay, well, if the shop ever closes again, because that was my fear, uh -huh. there was, there mm -hmm. had never been a shutdown. So mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, specifically in the hair industry, mm -hmm. no one had ever told us that we couldn't go do it. Like mm -hmm. you, no one could ever control my narrative. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I go to the shop when I'm ready to go to the shop. As mm -hmm. long as there are clients that are willing to come, mm -hmm. I'd never been out of a job per se as an entrepreneur that was very scary right. mm -hmm. and so even when the shop did open back up it was kind of like they were threatening to close it again uh -huh. and you know people sometimes were afraid to come in because we're still touching them yeah. we're over them so mm -hmm. initially I was just like okay this is a, a way to make some additional income to kind of supplement what I'm already so when it came to making the leap like I said my biggest fear again was just fear of the unknown just in general because this is still new territory I'd only been doing it for a year and it, it was just so new to me. I didn't know anything about the industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, influencing as a whole is still a newer industry mm -hmm. as a whole, but it was very, very new to me because it's not something I did this, you know, did, did research on yeah. and all of that. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it coming. Like it yeah. wasn't something I anticipated. Mm -hmm. So it was very new and it just fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, also again, the financial piece of it, um, just having someone to depend on me. So the steps that I did to overcome the financial piece, mm -hmm. um, I got out of debt. I had paid off everything with the exception of my student loans at the time that I mm -hmm. went full time. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, minimized my expenses as best as I could, which was pretty much a lot of the expenses I had was just debt from living frivolously yeah. in my twenties. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, not for yeah, just yeah. just spending money yeah. like it, like Make you know like it was growing on a tree, honey. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, that was pretty much the biggest safeguard. Mm -hmm. And then um, just. Of course, on the business side of things, just being consistent and doing everything that I could to make sure 
that I was doing everything that I could to to create a successful business in this new industry. Mm -hmm. And then that's it when I really started to do my due diligence to learn the industry, mm -hmm. learn how it works. How mm -hmm. do you get paid? How do you negotiate contracts? How do you read contracts? Mm -hmm. And again, that's just for this specific industry. industry but yeah. I would say um, to figure out what your fears are and then mm -hmm. figure out how you can conquer those fears. Like mm -hmm. I said, for me, mm -hmm. to conquer the fear of the unknown, get knowledgeable about the industry. The good mm -hmm. thing, you know, they're OGs, but when I came in, there's so much information out there. Mm -hmm. I did pay for classes. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of free research. I looked I at too. all the YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. I looked at all, like, I mean, mm -hmm. TikTok mm -hmm. wasn't around at that time, mm -hmm. but what it was, but people wouldn't own it like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um. I, I looked at all the Instagram. I mean, anybody mm -hmm. who was talking about content creating, I was in it. I was mm -hmm. looking for it. I was asking questions. Mm -hmm. And I did my due diligence to, again, make that fear of the Same. unknown go away. Because yes. that's something I could control. I can be as knowledgeable as I can. And mm -hmm. some things you'll learn as you go. Mm -hmm. But I, I sought out as much knowledge as I could. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, the second fear, which is the money piece, mm -hmm. I, that's when I made sure that I had my uh, my cushion mm -hmm. and made sure that I was as um, debt-free, except for the student loans. At that time, they were in forbearance anyway. Mm -hmm after the pandemic so mm -hmm. um to minimize my expenses as best as possible to make sure i was financially prepared as mm -hmm. i could be okay i didn't really have a fear mm -hmm. when it was time for me to quit my job because i was ready i was like thank you Lord. and it's <laughs> <laughs> Cause I have been praying I'm on it for you. years. I'm gone. Oh, like, <laughs> so I say less. So yeah. once I got God's and mm -hmm. cry the approval after crying and praying and praying mm -hmm. and crying for years, mm -hmm. and I actually saw the the fruits of my labor mm -hmm. forming in mm -hmm. front of me in mm -hmm. in coin, mm -hmm. and I can it was more tangible. Mm -hmm. I don't. If, I have to remember we're on Chi Chi's channel. If you guys don't know, I'm I'm not married and I don't have kids, so I don't have a lot of a, a lot of responsibilities outside myself. Mm -hmm. So I do have a little bit more room to have childlike faith. Yeah. Monetarily mm -hmm. with that, so because I, I don't have a lot of added uh, pressure because I'm not I'm not raising someone or, mm -hmm. or responsible for someone else. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know. I think I, I just I don't know. I guess I know myself. And I and God has blessed me, and I'm not saying this is this anyone is wrong mm -hmm. if you have fear because mm -hmm. I think a little fear is healthy because yeah. it helps you prepare. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, sometimes I could just be a little naive, and I'm like, thank you, so I'm gone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in in that area, I I didn't have a lot of fear, but I did have a lot of irritation uh, mm -hmm. because I just did not like my job. Mm -hmm. That was really my hardest thing is mm -hmm. the the irritability of having to get up and work in a place that you're just so unhappy with and mm -hmm. the drain oh my god nobody really talks about the draining how draining it is to pretend because mm. you're going to work and you can't stand it mm. you can't get a job that you don't like and you can't stand it and you're literally having to put on for eight to ten hours mm. um, just to get back and do extra work on the job that you like and you're mm -hmm. already drained mm -hmm. even more because you were at the other job that you don't like and you have to put in work over here so that you can eventually get over here. So working a lot in the job that I like is less draining than working a little in the job that I don't. So it was that was my biggest struggle because it's just it that was the only things and I'm I'm a I hate this and I'm working on it, but I'm a natural complainer. Like mm -hmm. if every, I'll, I'll find something mm -hmm. to complain about <laughs> and God be like, God dog. So why are you <laughs> like, why are you coming to me without this again? Because I helped you over here with this and you coming at me on this. So that was my biggest struggle. Mm -hmm. um, but once I started seeing things actually come to place, I kind of, I was already ready to leave. Mm -hmm. Like that, that helped me out. And I knew enough about myself to know, I'm going to put in the work and mm -hmm. we're going to be good. Yeah. And if we're not good for a little bit, we gonna be, we're going to get there. It's mm -hmm. not going to be an issue because of how God made me. So mm -hmm. so piggybacking off of what, was it Nina? Was it you that talked about just, well, what I, what, you said fear something. Of unknown, fear of the unknown. Yeah. So should, being a, being back, piggybacking off of fear of the unknown, <laughs> if you're trying to get over those fears, working, learning, teaching yourself, like creating a plan too. So whatever it was, I know for years, like one of the things that was scaring me was health insurance. I'm relatively yeah. very he uh, healthy, you know, but I was like, oh, I have a kid. Oh, entrepreneurship, you don't have health insurance. Health insurance is not that big of a deal. I know yeah. that's something a lot yeah, of entrepreneurs yeah. think about. It's really not that big yeah, of a deal. I mean, yeah. I don't know, depending on what state you live in, if you have a kid, because again, I had a kid, I'm like, what about if he gets sick? Most places have insurance that you could like free, what, yeah. isn't that Medicaid, for, mm -hmm. for children. So if you are worried, okay, I'm not going to earn enough to pay for health insurance, 
well, you can enroll your kid into Medicaid. And that, because I, I believe almost all the states have that. Yeah. So even if you don't have insurance, your kid yeah. will definitely yeah. have sure. insurance, right? And then even when you start making money, it does not, you know, you can pay for health insurance. Mm -hmm. Things, things to pay like out the, of pocket. Yeah, yeah pay mm -hmm. out of pocket. National Health Exchange. Anyone right. can have health insurance. I know it differs from state to state. Yeah. But a lot of the things that you think that are so big, they're, and really they're really not. And I think it was also me getting around women who were already where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. That is what really, you know, made me realize that all these things that you're, all these issues, all these things. I remember, I remember, I, remember, I think it was like Rochelle who talked about she had been full time for a while or the insurance that she has with Mike. And I was like, okay, so there is some kind of insurance yeah. for, you know, but I had never looked into it. So it was this big cloud. Oh, health insurance, health insurance. And it's not so, one, insurance isn't one size fits yeah. all. You get, they have different variations of uh -huh, price level uh -huh. that you can get into yeah. that you can work with. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. works for you, I mean. So whatever fear that you have, just going and educating yourself is going to be pivotal in helping you get over that fear. Mm -hmm. And also, again, like I said, surrounding yourself with community of women, even if you don't know them. Mm -hmm. Like for me, what one of the things that inspired me was um, Monroe and Janae. Listen. Yes. Um, like, you know, I was like, you know what? And them specifically. Monroe specifically, because she's been blogging almost long as long time. as that I have, yeah. you know, and she had gone through so many of the same hurdles I had mm -hmm. as far as money, and I saw how her life changed in like a year and a half, and I was like, you know what, no one could, like, if she could work, I could work, yeah. okay, let me be in my little corner of <laughs> where I am, okay, yeah, I should work. She's like 13 years yeah, now, right, you know? or something like that. Yeah. And her she, and yeah, Karen, right, I think, or yes. the yes. 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 you know, and so, and Again, maybe it's just the time in the industry that's finally opening up. But I, I saw that wave and I saw them make that pivot. And I was like, you know what? If they can do it, I owe it to myself to give myself a chance. Yeah. And there is nothing more confidence boosting in you going with your gut, taking a chance. Mm -hmm. And even if it doesn't do well, it teaches you valuable lessons that you can put into something else. Apply. Okay, mm -hmm. That you can apply. And you, you owe it to yourself to mm -hmm. try. Yeah. Like, yes. You owe that to yourself. Yep. And you have to let go of the fear of fa failure because I mean, what is failure? When I mean, you fail, what do they say? Never fail. You're always a lesson because it's yes, really what you're yes, learning yes, something. There have yes. been one podcast that I love mm -hmm. listening to is mm -hmm. how I built this mm -hmm. because there are so many companies, okay. like mm -hmm. big name companies. Mm -hmm. If you listen to their story, mm -hmm. a lot of them fail. I remember specifically one that really stuck with me is the chicken salad chick. I think is the name she mm -hmm. has. Um, physical locations mm -hmm. and just to hear how she started and they had they were almost about to get bought out of their own company mm -hmm. by bringing in an investor and mm -hmm. something financially and just to hear how hard she worked like literally on the verge of losing somebody buying her out of her own company mm -hmm. to buy themselves back in mm -hmm. you know so just hearing how these people have gone through all of these hurdles I mean you look at like Estee Lauder and mm -hmm. you know the chicken salad chick or the lip bar mm -hmm. or I mean they've literally interview some of everybody but I just mm -hmm. love hearing stories of how these companies got to that point mm -hmm. because we feel like sometimes like oh they had investors or whatever mm -hmm. and even if they did mm -hmm. literally every business that we see you know big small whatever they have overcome many hurdles yeah mm -hmm. and things that would have not I know knock the wind out of me you know mm -hmm. I'm like they, mm -hmm. they did what mm -hmm. they had to figure that out and it's mm -hmm. like if they did there's no difference in them and you like mm -hmm. the only difference is the fact that they didn't give up like yes. literally Watching, I love listening to it because mm -hmm. again, the biggest difference in any the business that's keep that's mm -hmm. continuing to go is that they didn't give up. They mm -hmm. may have had to pivot, mm -hmm. they may have had to shift, mm -hmm. they may have had to have a name change, mm -hmm. they may have had to get back up and reconfigure the business. Okay, mm -hmm. we tried this and it didn't work, and mm -hmm. that that taught us. Okay, well, people don't want it like this. We need a storefront. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. we tried this and the storefront. We closed the storefront. Mm -hmm. We figured let's just ship it, or mm -hmm. we merged with this company. The mm -hmm. merger didn't work out, so we had to get bought out or buy mm -hmm. ourselves back mm -hmm. out or whatever these people had to go through yep. in order for their business to continue. Mm -hmm. it, it, it may have taken a couple of pivots before it picked up. Mm -hmm. It may have just, there are very few businesses that are really instant hits. We yeah. see them nowadays, mm -hmm. but for the most part, majority of businesses have gone through some, some kind of hard hurdles. knocks, if not yeah. a few, mm -hmm. to get to where they are. So mm -hmm. I would just recommend that. And a lot, of, and again, there were people that, again, pivoted later in life, started mm -hmm. later on in mm -hmm. life. So, mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean to make encouraging. this spiritual, mm -hmm. but the presence I'll, of the Lord is here. Amen. 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 And the, <laughs> there are. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of Christians that feel like if it's too hard, then it's mm -hmm. not meant for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. And sometimes you have to pray and mm -hmm. walk. 
by mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. And that God doesn't promise that that walk is going to be mm -hmm. without a little wobbling mm -hmm. and a little stumble. Mm -hmm. He just said walk. Mm -hmm. and, and in the midst of that, you like, like she said, you'll mm -hmm. find things, you'll learn lessons, you'll fail, mm -hmm. and you'll learn what to do next, or you'll learn how to pivot, mm -hmm. or you'll learn what people like and what they don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't feel like everything should come so easy or just yeah. because this didn't come easy that it's not for me yeah because there's a lot of people that are putting in work and eventually getting there mm -hmm. and your storyline just means you just may need to work a little harder to mm -hmm. get there oh, and a you longer. Yeah, or a little the longer hardships, mm -hmm. there's something that you learn from that hardship mm -hmm. that may so you when you get to it, you like oh i needed to go through that yeah. yes yeah. or i needed to go through this to learn okay i don't need to merge with them or mm -hmm. i know next time if there's a merger i need to have this mm -hmm. kind of contract or mm -hmm. have this provision in the contract or mm -hmm. i need this much ownership and shares you know i don't do that but i'm just saying she mm -hmm. was just talking about her lessons in that specific situation mm -hmm. that helped them when they did grow the company mm -hmm. to make it i think it's a franchise i think mm -hmm. but it was something that she learned in that instance that right. helped them to grow to grow the business to where it is now yeah. right. so i feel like again those are what people may consider a failure but mm -hmm. it was a lesson to help them to pivot and to help them to grow exactly. so yes. i agree it's, it's it's you know god's blessing does not mean that it's going to be Easy. A cakewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, life is not gonna be no cakewalk. <clears throat> he did. He told us that. Yeah. So, but mm -hmm. he he promised to be with us. And yes. He promised to give us provision and yes. wisdom yes. and all of that. And he has given, but that don't mean that it's gonna, it's be, gonna be easy. easy yeah. Because it ain't. I yep. just had a dinner <laughs> with my management company, and mm -hmm. a lot of oh, them. Management. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. A you lot of them. You like this. Okay. <laughs> Why am I? I don't know. <laughs> and a lot of them laugh at me because I ask a lot of questions and mm -hmm. I do things that a lot of people, I don't want to say feel taboo, but mm -hmm. a lot of people don't feel like they have the permission to do. Mm -hmm. Like email somebody and be like, why are you asking me to pay? Like the, t mm -hmm. like the ticket thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what does this mm -hmm. consist of? Mm -hmm. Why are we paying if mm -hmm. this is supposed to be a reward? Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. But normal people, well, now I want to say normal people, but a lot of other people wouldn't feel like <coughs> they have the right to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But the reason I've asked so many questions is because I've come into so many situations where I didn't know mm -hmm. or I failed mm -hmm. or somebody over somebody did me wrong mm -hmm. or I didn't read this mm -hmm. you know and I didn't ask questions about that mm -hmm. and I learned to not just assume mm -hmm. and start doing things differently so even if this question whether it's allowed or not I'm gonna mm -hmm. ask it mm -hmm. because this is something that I may need to know going forward that will help me mm -hmm. help my journey and help me be able to help someone else as well mm -hmm. so it's just little stuff like like that you may find in your walk that may train you to be different mm -hmm. so that your journey is a bit more easier and a lot less stressful mm -hmm. because you come into conflict or hardships that mm -hmm. may have pruned you to do something differently so don't walk away from the discomfort mm -hmm. and don't walk away from the not knowing mm -hmm. because you can change those things mm -hmm. you can learn skills that mm -hmm. will help you be better in those areas mm -hmm. that allow you to have the life that you're wanting to have and a little peace of mind that's yes all. yes yes i love when you use the word pruning because i think also i feel like entrepreneurship actually makes teaches you so much reliance on god and i know everybody's faith is different but like you really have to learn to like rely that that he is working things out for your good. Even the hard things, even the pruning, even the mistakes, even mm -hmm. the time it takes to, to get to your goal, that is part of the journey that he's trying mm -hmm. to work out in you. So if you are trying something, and I know, like they said, black women are like one of the top business starters or something the like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. And it's because cause we, we have to learn, okay, to make, make something out of nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So even if you are in that journey and it seems really hard, you have to know that as long as you prayed about it, and again, I'm a Christian, so I'm gonna always pray. Okay, mm -hmm. unless as long as you prayed about it and you've gotten some kind of like confirmation mm -hmm. yeah. that you're on the right path, even when you hit up roadblocks, oh, you have mm -hmm. to keep going. Because again, six months into me leaving my job, that was March of the pandemic. You know, I remember I, I got one job with Elomi, and then we were talking about doing like a part two. Shout out Elomi, okay? Hello. Okay. I got him on right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, what'd you call it? We were Girl. talking about doing a part two, and they were like, oh, you know, because of the lockdown, let's put a pause mm -hmm. on this for three weeks. A lot of brands started making uh -huh. stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, were, they were nervous okay, about it. Okay, okay. And, so like, and I was like, cry. I was like, God, I prayed. Mm -hmm. I asked you, what are you doing to 
me like why why would you do this to me let me leave my whole job and all these things right mm -hmm. and i'm sure he was there just laughing like mm -hmm. what is wrong like, with this girl i'm working this out because he, he, he knew what the end of 2020 would look like because uh -huh. honestly a lot of mm -hmm. creators mm -hmm. that was their best year mm -hmm. because there were so many people at home mm -hmm. and especially when the Growth entertainment wise, industry everything yep. they mm -hmm. couldn't come together to create mm -hmm. the type of entertainment that we would sit and watch on mm -hmm. tv mm -hmm. so that we became another form of entertainment yep. Yep. and relatability because yeah. they're trying to figure out what the heck what the heck is everybody else doing during yeah. the pandemic yeah. I don't yeah. know, you know. in the house board in the house board right exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, but god knew that we didn't yes. yes god knew about that possibility we had no yeah. idea yes yeah. yeah so like you know sometimes you just got to push through all those areas of discomfort and yeah. rely on him i mean honestly i always say like i knew somebody who quit their job and went full time two day, two years later. I'm not gonna mention who they are, but y'all all know who this person is. And within a year they went back to their job because they I didn't, at that part time, I was not full time. I didn't understand the full time stresses. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized a lot of their behaviors now. I understand like what they were going through, but I was just like oblivious um, to it. But they have to go back to their job because they were not making enough from the, you know, the full time, um, being a full time creator. And they wanted to continue to live the same life. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that is like, you have to be ready for a season of and stretching sacrifice. and sacrifice mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. making a pivot. Yeah. No matter where you're pivoting, you have to set your expectations. It's better for you to, I don't want to say aim low, but I don't also want you to be like super, so over optimistic, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That you set yourself failure. You yeah. got to use a little bit of your brain, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> when you're mm -hmm. making, just a little bit, <laughs> you know, when you're making these things, right? And I actually feel like the pandemic gave me a little bit of a cushion because if I was being honest, that was the perfect time to leave. I wanted to leave my job a year mm -hmm. before I left, right? That pandemic gave me those, when everybody was in this house, in the house, to have enough time to create content, to have enough eyes on my content, mm -hmm. to grow. To my, create a firm foundation. Yeah, you know, yeah. to learn the okay, business. Yeah, and all these things. You know, <laughs> even, even those little, like, unemployment checks, all of that stuff really that came in handy. <laughs> like, I feel like if I had quit any other time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody would have understood why I was home broke. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at that time, so many people had lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they understood. We all lost like, mm -hmm. money. You know? I never thought I would be known essential as a hairstylist. What you mean? <laughs> I am essential. I thought I was essential too. They was like, girl, your little numbers, we ain't at home. You can count that calculator now. You know, that girl, that is. I always say you can work the calculator. You know? I'm not essential. I was like, like that. Anyway. Yeah. And I was the only person in my family who was non-essential at the time. Really? Really? So the so the so the world's reverse when we're talking about being the one in your family. Mm -hmm. My family was so eager and happy to help. And I had oh, just cool. gotten oh, wow. I had just moved in or signed mm -hmm. the lease for our new apartment. I was mm -hmm. upgrading when I get out of debt, I mm -hmm. downsized to a one bedroom mm -hmm. and a little study for Jada's room. Mm -hmm. And we had just gotten to a three bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And so the rent had doubled mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, pandemic, no worries. It had doubled before the pandemic? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. well, because I was moving to the to oh the, the red had double because you moved yeah there. I was yeah. moving so I was I had just gotten out of debt for the mm -hmm. most part mm -hmm. and you know I felt like God gave me the okay to go to, to this yeah. place and yeah. I was like well wait a minute Lord I can't go to work well, no Lord more. I thought I told yeah. you I had just this paid I <laughs> literally just paid off my car two weeks wow. before the shop shut down wow wow and it's crazy I was telling my friend I was mm -hmm. like I feel like God is pressing on my heart to get out of debt and mm -hmm. I didn't know for what reason this was mm -hmm. you know two years before the pandemic mm -hmm. a year before the real pandemic, good with that soft pressure yeah but it just kept pressing and I was like okay I'm gonna go ahead and get started on it mm -hmm. and I had no idea what it was for but mm -hmm. I thank God because during the pandemic mm -hmm. I didn't have any extra bills and mm -hmm. student loans were deferred so yeah. during that period because mm -hmm. it even took a minute for us to get our checks from um mm -hmm. unemployment yeah. because mm -hmm. I you know um but it took like I think like a month so mm -hmm. we got back pay but during that time thankfully mm -hmm. I had a little bit of a cushion yeah. mm -hmm. and all of my most of my family works in like healthcare care and mm -hmm. stuff like that and so they were like you know bringing us food mm -hmm. and like help me to get stuff to move and mm -hmm. stuff like that so God is just so good. Just thinking about that, mm -hmm. how you were like at the time, like you crying, like God, why? And you're looking back, like there was a season that yep. was necessary. That was I was exactly sitting up here, needed. like, what you mean? I can't go to work. Like mm -hmm. I, I just, I'd never been in a in a mm -hmm. position where I was told that I can't work. Like, mm -hmm. what you mean? Mm -hmm. That was just scary. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur in mm -hmm. any space, like mm -hmm. you, you would think like you kind of again control your narrative mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. and for someone else to come in and tell you no, you can't go to work. It's like, mm -hmm. well, what you mean? That was just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was just a scary time. So. God did that with me too when mm -hmm. I crying and whining about wanting to leave my job, honey. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Girl, bye." 
Mm-hmm. And he was actually giving me time mm-hmm. because during the pan- like during the pandemic, I started having I had never had an anxiety attack before. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what that meant when people said they had an anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. I thought they was just, you know, a little, mm-hmm. a little nervous, a little worried. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was a physical, yep. you think mm-hmm. you're about to die. Mm-hmm. You're like your heart is tripping mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you're about to pass out. Your wow. vision is blurry. Mm-hmm. Like all of that. And mm-hmm. I, it stopped, it literally handicapped me from doing regular. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. She was like, you <laughs> 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 like, Goofy. I don't know how they put up with me. Oh my god. But it the anxiety attacks, mm-hmm. I had them very frequently. I'm talking every day mm-hmm. for about um almost every day for about a year. Ooh, wow. Oh wow. And mm-hmm. I had on a heart monitor and everything because Does I thought it was work? it was from the change of life. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't think I'm a control freak, mm-hmm. but just I'm I'm very laid back. Mm-hmm. However, I didn't realize that the uncertainty mm-hmm. that surrounded us during the pandemic mm-hmm. really triggered me and i went straight into the i was alone by force Mm. a little bit and i went straight into anxiety having Mm. panic attacks so often to Mm. the point it handicapped me to the point where i couldn't even take a shower Mm -hmm. because i thought i was gonna die in the shower so and i couldn't drive over bridges i couldn't go anywhere by myself Mm -hmm. i couldn't be in the house by myself my mama uprooted her life for like three or four weeks Mm -hmm. and stayed with me until i got to the point where I can talk myself through the anxiety attacks mm-hmm. and get myself out of it without having to call ambulances and like medical bills, all this piling up because mm-hmm. I'm thinking about to die. Mm-hmm. But I needed the cushion of a full time job during that time because mm-hmm. that would have handicapped me from work, yes. from productivity. Yes, yes. And it was that's a year. Mm-hmm. That's a that's the year that I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And there was some times where I couldn't go to work, but I mm-hmm. still had the PTO. Yeah. Yeah. I still had the comfort and the cushion Mm -hmm. of a PTO Mm -hmm. and a boss at the time that was understanding Mm -hmm. to be like, you know what? Take the time for yourself that you Mm -hmm. need that Mm -hmm. week that you need. That's cool. Like Mm -hmm. just update me. Let me know how you're doing. He was also like an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. he knew the things I was juggling. Mm -hmm. Um, But he also was just very understanding Mm -hmm. and everything. So he, God knew exactly what I needed to. Mm -hmm. I'm such in a rush to get out and about. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I I have a vision here. I have that childlike faith with money and mm-hmm. he like I like the fact that you got faith in me however you need to stay still mm-hmm. because that faith gonna run you right into this mm-hmm. if you don't work it right so mm-hmm. he you don't know the whole picture mm-hmm. and in the discomfort it may feel like you should give up or you should not do this or you don't you know but God knows the full picture and like mm-hmm. she said it's good to uh, partner your entrepreneurship with the faith so mm-hmm. that you can have that walk in because he know all things mm-hmm. all things beginning and end mm-hmm. um, and it's best to work at it with him yeah. yeah, I think you said you mentioned you wanted us to talk a little bit about. I don't know if y'all said wanted to do this. What the money? Yeah, the yeah, money. I mean, as far as when we were, um, how that looked when we were creating that. The pivot. Yeah. There you go. Um. So the first year, uh, let me see. No, how much did I make? I'm trying to think. I remember that what how much I made the year that I pivoted. I think I only made like twenty something thousand off of like content creation. The and year that you quit your job? No. I'm 2020. Oh, okay. it was, now it's all a blurry. I feel like it was. Every time like, we got everybody yeah. like, how much did I? I just, I just <laughs> so remember long the, ago. First thing, <laughs> the first significant. I just remember, <laughs> like, I'm thinking about my taxes, and I know it was like 20 <laughs> grand. Yeah, because you do your taxes the following year, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that year that I made the pivot, I think I made about 20 grand off of creating content and the rest of the money I made was from teaching Mm -hmm. right so based on that like you would think girl you have no business leaving your job you have no business like what are you doing right so I think it's good for us to kind of like set a expectation and like everybody's everybody's different but that's how much money I had made the first year and I wouldn't have been able to survive and do all the things that I had done if I had not yeah, all the things we talked about cut your expenses mm-hmm. minimize this minimize that mm-hmm. because i was able to do all of that i wasn't as focused on the amount that i was making right and i had used that time also to really 
learn a little bit more about the business, game certain scenarios, so I was a little bit more confident going the following year to what was going to happen in my business. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why you should also be careful about who's in your ears, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for my people who like have spouses. I know if, when you have somebody else to consider, like for me, it was my son that was the biggest person I had to consider. And my mom was also a big influence in my life as well. But I chose to block her out <laughs> at that time in my life. Like I chose to block her out because I'm like, she doesn't get it. Talk yeah, she, no. you know, she, mm -hmm. does, she yeah. doesn't quite get it. And again, the proof is in the pudding. So you, How does your family feel about it now? Yeah. Oh, my mom was just like, you know, I didn't understand. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't, she had been telling me about this for years. If I knew. <laughs> she said, if know? I knew then what I knew now. <laughs> She's like, if I knew, I would have helped you. I would have left I would have bought you. She said, anyway, she's like, tell her to spread the word. We need to add content created to the list of the, uh, you know, the acceptable jobs. She makes right? <laughs> my business. Like, yeah, she makes this 70000 every month. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you gotta kind of like block some certain people out yeah. well, as long as, again if you've prayed about it, if you have it in your heart that this is the right move that you're supposed to be making some people won't get your dream and you need yeah. to be okay with that right once you start having results then go ahead nothing else to say period mm -hmm. I, I was about to say i will say it's important mm -hmm. um, who you have in your ear because yes. for me I didn't have really any naysayers, mm -hmm, honestly, mm -hmm. which I think is a, a different... I'm, I'm asked about that often. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, my family friends Yeah, I'm me. asked too. So yeah. I think the difference maybe, though, mm -hmm. was, again, I did hair in high school. Yeah. I was known as a braider. My stuff mm -hmm. was like publishing the school books and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Everybody would come to me and get their hair done. So I think when I said I was going to go do hair later, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Like, nobody mm -hmm. yeah. really yes. looked at it differently. Mm -hmm. The person that I really thought, and I'm so thankful. Shout out to my mama. Mm -hmm. Because, honestly, if my mama would have been like, she didn't want me to leave college, I would have stayed, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. of course I'm sure God would have redirected it later, but mm -hmm. that was the person who, because I just knew the sacrifice that she mm -hmm. made, and I wanted to make her proud. I wanted yeah. to, her to reap the reward of her sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to see her daughter mm -hmm. successful, you know, mm -hmm. and again, I had this picture of what I thought success looked like at that time. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you mature and you're exposed to different things, of course, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't grow up in a social media era, so mm -hmm. success was, you know, the Huxtables and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We didn't have you know, like the celebrity hairstyles and mm -hmm. all of that. We didn't see that when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyway, it was just different. So, of course, when I made, now, when I made the leap to do content creation full time, mm -hmm. again, my family and friends helped me. My sister, mm -hmm. my family don't do content. They mm -hmm. don't, y'all don't see them on chat. They don't want to be. Like, they're not into mm -hmm. social media in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But my sister would help me. Like, for my first few campaigns, my sister would get the camera. Like, how I work this? What you want me to do? Mm -hmm. My family, I would text them in a group chat. Like, hey, I got a brand new. Can y'all go comment and like these pictures? Mm -hmm. My mom tells everybody. Nice. Like, my daddy swear. Like, my daughter, you know, she take pictures for magazines. I don't take pictures ah! of magazines, Daddy. Mm -hmm. But they swear, Ooh. like, my family, you can't tell that I'm not Beyonce. Mm -hmm. I am Beyonce, mm -hmm. and don't tell them nothing different. Period. They'll be like, what you mean? Mm -hmm. You don't see my baby? You know? I, get, I get that. You I don't see my sister? Mom. You don't see, you know, like, my friends be like, no, nah, sister Beyonce. So yeah. And so I love that. <laughs> but my friends would help me, like, pull up on the weekends when they was free. Um, in the summer, y'all know Shania, my one of my best friends, she mm -hmm. worked for me in the mm -hmm. summer before mm -hmm. I could even pay her. I did mm -hmm. eventually, but mm -hmm. I say all of that to say my family and friends were extremely supportive. Mm -hmm. Now, when I made the leap later, again, mm -hmm. it was kind of more of a hush-hush thing, which, mm -hmm. you know, some people were upset about, but I love y'all. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Into content so creating? Client, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't make a big, like, public post about it. Mm -hmm. I just sent a text to my clients. It was hush-hush mm -hmm. because yeah. of the, the clientele was, just, was the one that was the issue, or was yeah. it some of your family? Oh, okay. No, my family was like, was cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Like, mm -hmm. they they were like, The I'm clients sure? just wanted you to keep doing mm -hmm. it here. Are you so sure? Like, yeah, that's yeah. it. They were like, I mean, that's cool, but can I just come to your house? I'm like, no, I'm not doing it at all. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> you don't think you don't miss do like to this? Yeah. Like, you don't miss. You don't think you want to do a couple heads? I, I see you doing Jada hair, but you don't want to do mine. <laughs> I, I was like, like no. 
I feel like I saw you repost somebody that were like, well, anytime you want to come do my hair, something yeah. so good. And I forget that you were actually a hairstylist. Like, yeah. Aside from being a content creator. Yeah, you know? that's hilarious. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, so mm -hmm. that was more hush hush, mm -hmm. you know, and looking back, again, it was the fear. Mm -hmm. It was the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want, just like I talked about with the house thing, it was mm -hmm. like if we did, because somebody's like, why you do it to go like a retirement party and all this? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I was scared. Like, yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. So yeah. I was just like, let me just bow out gracefully and yeah. go over here and do this because mm -hmm. I just, it was just fear. And, and, and but sometimes just, there's wisdom in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just thankful that mm -hmm. I did, because in that, mo that that fragile time, I don't mm -hmm. know, with my mom specifically, mm -hmm. if I would have been strong enough to do mm -hmm. it anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Yeah. But I know that I was very, very concerned about her mm -hmm. opinion and her feelings of what she would think. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thankful mm -hmm. that she was like, well, you know what, if that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. go ahead and try mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So, because I, I can't mm -hmm. say that I would have had the strength to turn to, to turn my mom yeah. at now, that time. No, I say that but I had to block out my mom, but mm -hmm. even when I made that decide to quit my job, literally my mom was the final sort of like checkbox. Because mm -hmm. she, just like you, how you were, you, you didn't like your job, my mom knew I didn't like my job. My mom saw how hard I, w I worked mm -hmm. and was working. So I remember having, again, my mom is my mom is team stability, okay? <laughs> she worked yeah. for the government for 35 years. Okay, that is who she is. Oh, and she, she's a single parent. She had three kids, yeah. mm -hmm. four kids, so she had to be like that. I remember talking to her, after I'm talking to God, asking him for confirmation, confirmation. So I got on the phone with my mom. I was like, mom, oh my God, work starts in like a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so tired of this job. I'm so this. I'm like, I was just talking to her about all the things and she's like so leave my mom has never mm -hmm. ever been like that ever mm -hmm. like and i don't think she knew what she was telling me so she thought she was telling me so leave so go get another job like so leave <laughs> so leave you know take you a three like, wait 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 wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. i didn't mean like that yeah like, hold up leave, you know? hold your mute yeah <laughs> you know take a three month break come back like that's, yeah, that's all i need that's, to hear. i think that's what she was maybe you told me to leave yeah but she was like i swear to you as soon as my mom still and i knew that was god because mm -hmm. that had, my mom's narrative had has been the same from since when I was little. You know, have stability, have a job. Have, you know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So for her to be like, yeah, so leave so easily. That was all I needed. That was the stamp. It rubber stamped it. So as soon as she said that, I literally like two days later, I was supposed to be at work on Monday on Friday. I wrote she that email. Like, oh, no time, baby. Bye. I wrote that email to my principal. I'm like, prepare the email. Okay. We'll not be coming back this year. Everybody swear down the line. You know? <laughs> and you know what? And she's the same one who held me down when I was really struggling during the pandemic mm -hmm. with lack of money. I was like, You're you know, right. give me this amount of time and let's see what happens. If it doesn't work, then I'll start looking for another job. Because even when I left, what my, my goal was when I left was to find a job that complemented content creation. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really not to go full time. Let me be honest, at that time, mm -hmm. it was just to find a job that complemented content creation because my job was just becoming increasingly difficult yeah. to marry with content creation and that's another thing right god was trying to squeeze me and i was like holding on like no yeah. i need my paycheck i need my this is what i'm trying to say and he was like this job don't work this season is over move mm -hmm. you know move and so that was my original plan. But after looking for a job, like I'm like, first of all, looking for a job is a job. Mm -hmm. ghetto. I was like, you know what? And I started getting these little four hundred dollar wig making videos from these people yeah. that I had to, first they gonna offer you for 150 yeah. and I was like mm, no nah, that's not enough and like okay we can stretch the budget <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's excruciating. Yeah. Stretch to yeah. the y'all better know, stretched it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to yeah, pay really, you four hundred dollars to do the hair video, mm -hmm. and I started getting a little bit of those. Just like you know, and you know what the funny thing about that year was, and how I knew it was a leap of faith. I barely got any brand deals that year, like mm -hmm. barely. And it really wasn't until I made that pivot that work just started coming in more mm -hmm. consistently. And that's how you know God, like He's yeah. just waiting for Wait you, on you to make a move. to make a move. You know. So and you said you were making twenty thousand. You made twenty thousand when you left to go full time. I, I feel like the first time I checked, it was twenty thousand that first. Now whether it was twenty nineteen or twenty twenty, I cannot remember yeah. which one of the years it was. But I think it. I feel like it was twenty twenty that I made like twenty six thousand. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. But something like that, you know. So it wasn't even a lot of money, right? The following year, of course, you know, six figures, all the the fun numbers that everybody likes to talk about. Oh, but that first time when I looked at it and saw how much the breakdown was, mm -hmm. and I do think it was half and half, because I remember I was comparing how much money I made from my teaching salary 
in how much money I made from content creation. So I think it was like that first 2019 year that I was comparing. It was about 20000 So yeah. What was your first full-time? My first full-time or what I made before I quit? What was the what, what were we doing on question? I think it was uh, just your first year. No, I think it's just first the first year full time. Yeah, first full time. Year. Okay. Well, the first year full time. <coughs> well, first of all, I knew I could go full time mm -hmm. when I made my salary. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, sorry, I'm analytical, so I like numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll share the numbers. At the in accounting, I made eighty three at the mm -hmm. time before mm -hmm. I quit. Mm -hmm. And that's actually low. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot more. Like if you like accounting and mm -hmm. you like corporate, accounting is very lucrative. Mm -hmm. I would say go that route if you really like that job and you want something stable because mm -hmm. you the, the the sky is the limit. However, I didn't like it, so that was my limit. <laughs> Eighty three <laughs> is where I stuck, and I was like, I don't want to put a bunch of work in to get higher there mm -hmm. when I want to do something different. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. put more of my energy in this other space. Mm -hmm. Before when I decided that it's okay for me to leave, mm -hmm. I had made. I think it was in September is when I like September 2021 when I made my first 2020, 2020 I'm sorry September 2020 is when I made my first good month and that month I made 21,000 mm -hmm. and then at the end of the year I had made I want to say 75 okay uh that in those four no that, that was, was four that was the four months oh, mm -hmm. look at the mm -hmm. yeah that was september mm -hmm. 2020 to december mm -hmm. 2020 mm -hmm. and you know you do your income taxes mm -hmm. so i had both at the time mm -hmm. i was still working accounting mm -hmm. and when um i did it, the whole thing i think i had made like 75k mm -hmm. in those four months i was like okay. cool okay the next year is when i went full time mm -hmm. and i had made 177 i want to mm. say so yeah i i went full-time that year and that's okay. what i made that okay. at the end of that and again i think a lot has to do with mindset like you said i would i was working education and at that's the point so that draining. i left mm -hmm. at eight years my pay was fifty nine thousand five hundred. That's, now we work 10 months. Some people like to say, oh, you guys work 10 months. Even if I didn't work 10 months because I chose to have my summers off to create content, by the way. Mm -hmm. Even if I added the, the couple of months, I think maybe I would have been, uh, maybe, maybe, I don't think I would have hit $70,000 as my paycheck after working a job for eight years. This is what mm -hmm. teachers make, mm -hmm. okay? So for so your first full time was twenty thousand. Yeah. So yeah. for me, but it was the pandemic. Yeah, it yeah, was twenty six, yeah. tw tw like twenty six thousand, something around there. So these numbers seemed really big to me, right? To make twenty six thousand dollars, and the world is shut down. Yes, yeah. you know, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, like this was still like a big number that's still for a me. Yeah, right. You know, so that's 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 why I said a lot about like mindset set shift and how hard you actually have to work. To make money that was that was like one of the biggest lessons for me because i thought you had to work yourself to the ground to the like because that's what the expectation is <laughs> yeah, in it education is. So people well, that's just, what i think growing up also the way mm -hmm. we grew up that yeah you're taught mm -hmm. to think mm -hmm. like yeah to get there you mm -hmm. got to be working from the time your eyes open to the time they close yep. you yep. may not close them too long yeah okay um, mm -hmm. so to round off my first full-time year as an entrepreneur this was 12 years ago, mm -hmm. I don't remember the number. Mm -hmm. I just remember my goal was 500 a week. And I say mm -hmm. week as a stylist, typically we base our, our money off of, I couldn't tell you what that is for a year. Mm -hmm. We base our sa our salary off what you make per week. Because it's mm -hmm. typically how you pay your booth rent. Okay. You pay a booth mm -hmm. rent per week. So that's and so we typically mm -hmm. look at how much we make per week. So that mm -hmm. was my goal. And I think I, I hit that by like the end of the first year. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it was 12 years ago. So that was, I think, a pretty good amount of money then. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they equal per year so 2000 um, times 12. so that's that's 2000 times 12 is 24. 24 yeah. yeah okay so mm -hmm. add it that's probably my first year mm -hmm. mm -hmm. have higher week or yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that was that was 12 years ago mm -hmm. um and then so my first influence so my first 2020 i think i started i got my first brand deal towards like the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. 2021 is i guess when i actually started like realizing like, oh, like, oh, okay, this, actually, could be like, this is cool. Yeah. I think that year I might have made around 20, no, I think I made around like maybe 35,000. Mm -hmm. Your first um, full time year? No, that was oh. 2021 when oh. I actually started. Cause I was accepting like, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe five hundred dollars here, hundred fifty mm -hmm. dollars there. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. my first few campaigns was literally fifty and seventy five dollars. Mm -hmm. so I was just mm -hmm. happy that I was yeah. like, oh, this is cool. Was too. Yeah. I made it too. I'm not gonna say <laughs> that. that. Mm -hmm. Like. I was like, oh, we want to send you this free, whatever. Cool, mm -hmm. yeah. It. Like, I just didn't. I, I just didn't, didn't know. I just didn't know. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is that, cool. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I was like, again, just supplemental income. Yeah. So yeah. I was just like, oh, this is cool. Like, yeah. I didn't 
think anything of it. So my first full time year, mm -hmm. I made mm, like <laughs> I, did, I made a little over three hundred thousand. My okay. income quadrupled from yes. what I made mm -hmm. my last full time years at yourself. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Like, like you said at the beginning, you were taking 50, 75, mm -hmm. all of that. And that's I think how, we all did. All, I, I, a lot yeah. of contracts. I think we like all you just, did whatever that. Whatever yeah, they inbox you. Because uh -huh. I know for me, I was just like, oh my God, this yeah. company. Like, mm -hmm. I was just excited to work with the company. And I mm -hmm. just, again, I didn't know what to charge, yep. what to do. And mm -hmm. so yeah. I was just taking whatever they offered. And I yep. was excited to get the clothes or to do the thing. Mm -hmm. And because I was just looking at it as like supplemental income. income. So yep. what I was doing at, I wasn't looking at it like, yeah, this is the job. It was just something fun to do. Yeah, that's the same thing. Like, even when I had decided I was gonna try and make this full time, I was taking four hundred dollar deals and five hundred dollar deals. But then mm -hmm. I had to say, I'm like, girl, you can't make a like, you can't live. You can be working of, yourself of the, You know, yeah. and that's what I think. What I loved about the pandemic because it really helped me to do some like research, deep dive into like what people were making. Because I'm like, ain't nobody you people. I'm like, how many hair videos am I have to make a month to make four thousand dollars? And that year they actually started. Being more uh -huh. vocal, people uh -huh. started being more vocal. Uh -huh. right. You know, I'm like, this is, this is not right. sustainable to be taking four hundred dollars. You know, the whole, the, the whole and then, race thing. I was like, this is gonna kill your your engagement because who yeah. wanna watch ten hair it's videos stupid. on your channel? Yeah. You know, so also <laughs> just doing that learning and being amongst like I know for me I joined uh, the glow up that Shanae has your mm -hmm. girl. Um, that was one You're of the groups girl. that. <laughs> that no, what you call like that? <laughs> Not my girl. <laughs> <laughs> what you call it? The boss. Okay. 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 Yeah, her tax well, bracket Nita. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the one behind. <laughs> the behind the behind. Okay. Yeah, she. The, the figures. Black Chris Jenner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. is a good. I meant to send her the video. From, uh, yeah. You know, Chris Jenner was it? No. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm like we finna go. We yeah. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so that funny. that really helped me because I saw what my peers were making, and I was like, oh my god, that's when I learned to start saying no. Okay. I'm like, whatever I gotta do to level up, to get to the point where I can demand what I consider a living wage. Because I know one of the biggest questions for new content creators, and this is not what this video is about, so right. I'm just gonna rush through it real quick, is how much do I charge? I think you should definitely factor in what it takes for you to live. Especially if you're gonna do this full time, add taxes, you add taxes because mm -hmm. taxes are real mm -hmm. as we have well. To pay them quarterly. Uh, yes, Period. okay. <laughs> so they gonna get it one way or another. Amen. You you need to factor all that in. You know, yes, engagement matters and likes and blah 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 blah. Work at improving your engagement if your engagement is not is low, or work on growing your brand. Maybe it is me, does mean you stay longer at your job so you can work to the point where you can confidently de determine or demand an amount of money. Um, that you need to live and that's mm -hmm. sustainable for your brand because you don't want to be doing an ad every five minutes your audience is going to get tuned off mm -hmm. you know so I remember I was, there was this girl on TikTok and she was complaining about how her engagement got low and I was like yeah because girl you started doing way too many ads you hadn't even grown that much mm -hmm. for you to be doing like every other video is an ad, an ad. You, you know they're buying space on your platform but it also comes at a cost when you overdo it so you need to charge for that as well. Either you do know? the extra work that uh -huh. balances it out mm -hmm. or, you know. Uh -huh. And even in, in like with, I think even when you're, even outside of content creation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're doing, mm -hmm. you have any other career, mm -hmm. take a little bit of discernment and have those conversations like mm -hmm. how we're having with numbers included because mm -hmm. I didn't know I was like, $15,000 underpaid mm -hmm. until I had a conversation with a trusted friend mm -hmm. that let me know how much she was getting paid to do mm -hmm. the exact job that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so stuff like that lets me, that actually made me put in a bit more work to mm -hmm. have conversations with my boss. Mm -hmm. And it a lot of the time he came back and told me what I was worth. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that mm -hmm. because we're literally doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like that you're getting to tell me. So the knowledge is power, basically. Mm -hmm. um, even in any career, mm -hmm. they would discernment, build a trusted community, mm -hmm. friendship group mm -hmm. of people that you can be around and have those in depth conversations so mm -hmm. that you can kind of plan your life accordingly with mm -hmm. more knowledge. Yeah. 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 I have a question. Mm -hmm. Have you guys, so I know we all have an ideal salary, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may be ever changing. Mm -hmm. However, comma, do, mm -hmm. have you met one of your ideal salaries? No, no. I actually, I glad you asked that because I actually took a twenty three thousand dollar pay cut to mm -hmm. go full time. Come on, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I, because I didn't like, I was so physically 
toxic mm -hmm. with me working the job that I was working mm -hmm. to my emotions to my body just I could feel it anxiety mm -hmm. all of that stuff was just too much mm -hmm. I was doing too much so I was like what are some sacrifices I can personally make to mm -hmm. be to lead mm -hmm. true closer to the life that I want to live mm -hmm. and have peace and the life that I want to live ain't always money based mm -hmm. I wanted peace in my yes. life I wanted to be able to live comfortably and have mm -hmm. peace thankfully and this is another part mm -hmm. that we talked about in the financial the financial segment mm -hmm. I live below my means to mm -hmm. where I can cut my salary twenty three thousand dollars and not mm -hmm. have to actually change my all of my living situation mm -hmm. I did make some cuts Mm -hmm. uh, but the cuts weren't drastic as far as like uprooting myself to a different location or a mm -hmm. different house or to mm -hmm. rent and stuff like that. I was living below my means enough to mm -hmm. where I can make that sacrifice and still have some issues. I, I also, like I said, another sacrifice I made was to pay my car off so I can mm -hmm. free some more mm -hmm. of that money mm -hmm. um, month by month. And I paid it all. God bless the money to come in enough mm -hmm. and me to still have a full time job so I can pay that off quickly. Mm -hmm. And I made that sacrifice, and then that's where, yeah. Mm. I would definitely say keys that's to pivoting that. later in life would definitely be sacrificing hard work. There's yeah. no way around it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's pivoting in any, is whether you're going to be an entrepreneur, whether mm -hmm. it's going in knowledge. Talking, mm -hmm. finding trusted people yes. within your industry, whatever industry that may be, where you mm -hmm. can talk numbers. You can't talk numbers with everybody. Mm -hmm. And I would not recommend to just be DMing anybody mm -hmm. or walking up to anybody and saying, well, how much is you? Like, mm -hmm. no, yeah, it's just not how to no. Mm -hmm. and, make, and, and let and, your circle look different because yeah. of yeah. how we are, because of us being black women, mm -hmm. a lot of the times, Color a different race ethnicity. and ethnicity yes. Yes. can yes. be like, well, paid yes. differently yes. than our white yes. counterparts. Yeah. Yes. So be sure to have a well-rounded yes. group because yes. you may ask your, yeah, your I may peers, ask her and she tell me something same, and yeah. then we be in line. But I may ask somebody else that have less than me. That I may ask another white woman that has less than me mm -hmm. and she tells me how much she get paid mm -hmm. and it be double or triple right. more than me. Right. So that then allows right. us to have a, a more depth conversation about yeah. e equality and pay. Mm -hmm. I just had a, a money conversation at an event and mm -hmm. found out and they were my counterpart like mm -hmm. color and everything but um there was a pay difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you gotta have those conversations yeah. and i'm yeah. thankful that she was willing to have that conversation with me yeah. and it wasn't even like a try because i don't i don't know her like that like mm -hmm. we're peers mm -hmm. but she was just like oh you know oh they didn't do that you need to sell them because this is what happened da, da, da. like she was yeah. like no oh, get on that like right. I was like oh bet thank you yeah because mm -hmm. i didn't i mean i would have uh, i wouldn't have otherwise known so yeah. Um, you just have to have those people that are willing to have those conversations and are, you know, just trusted. And sometimes uh, you are that person, so don't be so clank clank. Yeah, that is able. true. Because if you got information for free, don't feel like you got to pay. Yeah. Somebody yeah. got to pay you for it. You for can it. give it. Yeah. You know, you can give it for free and right. pass it yeah. along. Yeah. yeah. So this was such an impactful conversation. So we good. definitely want to continue chatting in the comments down below don't forget to like and subscribe and all those good things no, now this is if you love fashion and style that's definitely what we love to cover here but make sure you go check out nita's channel to see part one, one. Mm -hmm. yep and ashley's channel to see part two and yeah don't forget to rate comment subscribe and share and until next time stay blessed bye, bye. bye.